Thank you for watching the Tank Museum Workshop Diaries. In this episode, amongst other things, you'll see the work that we're doing on the Valentine Tank Suspension. If you like what you see, please subscribe to the Tank Museum on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the latest episode of the Tank Workshop Diaries. My name is Chris van Schoenberg. I'm head of collections here at the Tank Museum. A lot has happened since our last episode. It's been a busy uh, couple of months for us. Uh, and you may be wondering why I'm standing between all these engines and final drives and gearboxes. This is one of the things we had to uh, cope with fairly last minute um, in the last few weeks. These are all items that were donated to the Tank Museum by the Defence uh, Academy at Shrivenham. Uh, they used they use these as training aids over the years, over the generations of training on defence technology and the Defence Academy in Shrivenham kindly donated these to us. It's a whole room of these engines and gearboxes, there's a Chieftain gearbox here in front of me, there's a T34 engine, V8 from a Sherman, all sorts of things. We talk more in more detail about it at, at the next episode, but a fantastic uh, collection of items donated from the Defence Academy in Shrivenham. So we're very grateful for that. We had to, the guys had to make room for it here in the Vehicle Conservation Centre to make sure we can store these safely indoors and then we'll figure out what we do with it. We're also preparing for a massive vehicle move in the museum. We're completely redoing our second World War Gallery over the next uh, five to six months. And to prepare for this move, the workshop have completely repadded our Terex, which is a big bulldozer that we use for shunting vehicles, the heavy vehicles. Uh, around and it was always running on a set of um, modified chieftain pads but they were completely worn off over the years to a point where the steel track started to get through and obviously that will damage the floor and it actually loses a lot of grip as well it's uh, much more easy to spin once if you don't have a good rubber track like on a main battle tank itself Jacob our apprentice has done a lot of machining with Bob Kendall our machinist and they did a fantastic job by modifying a set of uh, um, chieftain pads we had when the vehicle has been in action already on a on a T-34 move, which you may have already seen the videos. The second vehicle that we use a lot for towing and will during the Second World War move is, is our Centurion Arf. Again, a very good vehicle to shunt vehicles. It's somewhat smaller than the Chieftain or, or Challenger recoveries and it has a traditional manual gearbox. It's very good to control. The guys always enjoy uh, using it for, for big moves. So they completely, they actually retracted. They didn't just change the pads, they completely retracted. We had, in the stillages behind me here, a couple of stillages uh, worth of um, uh, Centurion hush puppy tracks, as they're called, uh, and they uh, new old stock, and they changed them because the old ones were completely worn out. There, as I said, it was already on the steel actually, so that, again, it was starting to slide. Uh, that actually was used on the tortoise when it was moved. Still work going on in the workshop itself. Um, uh, Jonathan and the guys will talk about the Valentine. Our Valentine is now on um, on blocks in the um, in the workshop. A couple of years back, you probably remember we did the engine and gearbox, the sort of what we call a systems overall to make sure the vehicle is safe to operate for both the vehicle and the, uh, and the crew. So engine and gearbox went through the system, radiator, brakes, and we always said we get back to it, um, and now we're doing the suspension. So it's not a complete restoration, it's just going through elements of a vehicle. Uh, the suspension, they took it to bits, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of wear and tear, it's quite spectacular in some cases how badly it's worn, but that's why we're doing the job. We knew the, the suspension needed a serious amount of work. And it's always a bit like the guys used to describe with the Matilda uh, project, uh, almost like industrial archaeology. You would expect a lot of bearings in some of these wheels, but they're not, they're sleeved. Some are, some are bearings, but some are sleeved. And again, that's a, a very much a reflection of the time, during wartime, that arguably was a a, um, a bearing shortage, so they went to the sleeve system. But it faces over the dilemma, should we re-sleeve it? Should we put bearings on it? And in many ways, we want to continue what was there before we actually want to re-sleeve him, because that's what they were like during wartime. And I think it tells part of that story as to um, what type of um, bearings we put back in. We also want to thank Horseman Group. Horseman Suspension, or the Horseman Group, sorry, they, they provide the Challenger 1 um, Hydrogas suspension, uh, they still do it now for the army, overhaul those, and they kindly overhauled six of our um, um, hydrogas units for the Challenger 1. So they completely overhauled them so they're ready to be used as spares for our Challenger 1 that's running. And on top of that, just before Tankfest 2019, they completely serviced the existing hydrogas units on our Challenger 1 because the vehicle was always leaning, which causes quite a bit of problems with track tension on one side 
and a very loose track on the other side, but they had the right kit, the right people and the right knowledge to completely set it right. Uh, so now the vehicle's been level, has been performing very, very well at our own event, the home event, Tank Fest, but we also took it in September to a, uh, a tank event in the Netherlands at the National Military Museum in Susterberg. And the vehicle, again, performed very well there in Holland. So a big thank you to Horseman, to Horseman Group, for the overall and the fantastic support. We could not have operated the vehicle probably anymore without their support. If you look at the track on this Type 59, you see there's no rubber pads on it. Um, rubber pads are usually put on it to make the track less aggressive um, and they're fitted to most modern tanks so that they can drive on the road and they're also fitted to our Terex. Now the pads on the Terex are um, worn down and we've had to um, replace them with um, modified Chieftain pads. Um, this was done some years ago um, and we had to use an outside agency then but because of the new facility and the fact we've got Bob Kendall and Jacob we've managed to modify those pads ourselves completely in-house which has saved the museum quite a few bucks. Um, once we get those on, and the reason we want to get them on now is because of the big move and the amount of vehicles that we have to move within the museum. Uh, we don't want to scratch the floor and tear it up. The Terex is nice and small, it can pull heavy things. It means we don't have to use the Cent Arve or the Crave um, in the tight spaces. Um, so it's a really good time to get this um, repadding done. When I started here in 2016, well, the first job that I had to do was to rebuild the gearbox on this Valentine tank. And at the time, the Matilda project was running concurrently. And because we wanted to push forward with that, the remaining work that was needed to be carried out couldn't be done. I'm glad to say that now we can revisit this vehicle and do the suspension overhaul that was intended to get done um, in 2016. Uh, just to highlight some of the uh, problems that we have, the track adjusting wheel here you see all the mechanism is all gummed up um, over the years there's an awful lot of wear in some of the locking mechanisms so all of this unit will be once the track is split will be taken off cleaned new bearings applied and um, this takes an awful lot of stress because it holds the tension of the track so we like to make sure that the bearings on the TA wheels especially you know when we overhaul are in tip-top condition The suspension units again, if we just come around to the side here, uh, they're made up of uh, the suspension unit um, with its own integral uh, top roller. All of these are extremely worn. Uh, we certainly want to get the suspension unit apart in order that we can uh, make sure that it's working efficiently. There's a single top roller in the centre here and then another suspension unit um, which are kind of mirrored on the other side and um, we looked at it and we reckon that um, the rear left on this side will probably fit the front right and they've made two units, uh, two different units, although there's four on the vehicle. Um, if we go around to the other side, we can show you some of these um, bits off. Uh, so here we've got the TA wheel housing. Um, all of that mechanism has been removed. This um, is uh, for the bell crank for the track adjuster lock, so that when you adjust the track, you lock it against the teeth that we uh, saw earlier. Uh, the suspension unit with the top roller removed. There's a shaft in here that's, and um, these are quite um, solid at the moment, so we're going to have to uh, remove some of these access panels to get this out as gently as we can. Interestingly, on these uh, mounting bolts here, when the vehicle was uh, assembled, they've put little spot welds on each of the bolt heads to stop them coming undone. Um, it's worked very well because none of them are loose, obviously, but when it comes to taking them off, particularly if we want to save them, we won't be able to save them all because of the rust damage, uh, but we'll have to grind these off, uh, little spot welds off, before we take them out. 
Uh, coming back slightly further, you see that central um, uh, line, uh, top roller and then another suspension unit at the back uh, made up of the spring to absorb all the shock, the bump pads, um, which will probably need replacing as well. Um, and as I said, most of the bearings. Um, um, sometimes um, people see the grease nipples on them and assume that it's grease that goes in there. Um, on a lot of these old tanks, it's actually oil. So if they put grease in, it gums up all of the oil ways um, and can actually cause more har harm than good. Now we've got all of the top rollers and the road wheels for this particular station off. I thought it'd be quite a nice time just to point out some things. You can see the stub axles. Um, firstly for the top roller, we'll talk more about how they've uh, been bearing up later. And then the road wheels, um, the opposite configuration of what you see there on the back. Um, you can see on these rear seal carriers uh, the amount of wear that we're going to have to cope with now. Now the suspension on this is full, of, um, you know, contrary to popular belief, is full of oil, not grease. So these faces have to be like mirror finish, so that the rear face seals that go on the back um, actually keep all the oil within the bearing compartment of the hub. If we go around to the front, then you can see some of the um, units that they've taken off. You can see uh, the two track adjuster st um, stub axles with um, the new bolts that we've put in there, and then um, on the back some of the hubs. And here we have the top roller bearings. Um, now there was a couple of ways that they did this, depending on what tank you got and how many bearings they had at the time. They could put cage bearings in them, but another um, way of doing it was to do use bushes that you see here. Now you can um, also see that because of the ingress of dirt um, and bits of um, stone and so on, the scoring that's taken place both on the bronze face and on the inside steel face, um, those um, pathways that are cut in there to allow the oil to uh, migrate from right across the, you know, the inside of it. Um, that wear is not just um, you know, on the bearings, we also get um, bad wearings on the seals. If you get a bad sealing face, whether this comes up against, gets lumps knocked out of it, then what happens is they um, bite away at the sealing edge and then all the oil comes out. So it's very important that you have a mirror finish on whatever these lip seals are up against, otherwise you won't retain the oil within the assembly. Um, over here, you can see the taper bearings um, that are on, if I just as you do. Um, now these, we've, believe me, we've seen these a lot worse. These aren't too bad, um, but some of the um, uh, metal surfaces buried away, we will replace them because we want to make sure that particularly on the TA wheels, which has taken an awful lot of the load of the tracks on the front, um, that they're in uh, you know, top condition. You see the, again, the damage where dirt and stuff has got in the back and damaged this um, rear face seal. And we've also got um, uh, somewhere, I'll try and show you later on, 
Yeah, you can actually see that some of this cup that fits on the back is actually completely gone. And this should be about this big um, with a, a bent over to keep the dust and stuff out. So we're gonna to have to uh, try and remanufacture or get another one of those from make it from pattern. Uh, so as you can see, uh, you know, even on this one wheel station plus the two TA units, there's an awful lot of work to do. We've got to multiply that by four as we go around and do all the six top rollers as well. Uh, other jobs that we're going to try and carry out while we've got it in is to, um, we want to put a, uh, a new fuel tank inside the original one. Um, so that it lasts um, a few more years before we get any leaks. But we want to keep the outside one as the original pattern because it's a beautiful um, piece of kit. Um, lots of um, brass fillers and things on it that we don't want to lose. Um, we also want to take the opportunity this time to take out the steering controls. But again, that was something we didn't have time to do last time. And just take them apart, clean them up, get them all really nice and free uh, because you have got to work quite hard despite the fact that it's a small tank in order to drive this vehicle. A couple of episodes ago, we looked at Horseman Defence Systems and work they were doing on the um, hydro gas units that are fitted to our Chally 1 that we run here at the museum. They've basically reconditioned a load for us that we can hold in storage now and use at a later date as we need them in order to keep our Challenger on the road. Now, hydro gas suspension, um, the way that it works is it uses air and oil to absorb the shock of um, the vehicle hitting a bump and to maintain a decent ride height for the vehicle. And it uses, as I've said, oil and air, and I'll give it a go and see if I can try and explain how that works. As far as the oil's concerned, if you restrict the flow of oil, you can use it to dampen the shock effect um, of the vehicle hitting a bump. You can see I've got oil in the syringe now, and I'm pressing quite hard, but because of the restricted um, exit that the oil has, I can only push this at a certain rate. So the oil is slowing down the way that that piston moves, or in this case, the plunger in the syringe. And once the oil um, you know, bangs up, it stops mechanical contact, um, absorbs the shock. And then if we see how the air works, if we have air in the same system, and instead of restricting the air for, I constrict it completely, as I compress that air, um, the air um, actually can be squeezed, unlike the liquid, but what it wants to do when it gets to a certain pressure point is spring back. And that's how the suspension reasserts itself, and we maintain the ride height of the vehicle, very, very simply. Um, much more complex than that. Uh, they use um, guided oil ways to channel the oil down. And actually, um, some recall systems that we use on Chieftain especially, uh, use the combination of air, nitrogen in that case, and oil um, to maintain fixed lengths of recall, um, absorb recall energy, um, return the gun to the fully run out position, um, once the uh, recall has taken place, all using the same technique of oil and air working in concert with each other. Um, so very simply, I hope and that is how um, the Horseman suspension or the principle of hydrogas suspension works. This is one of the hydrogas units that's currently uh, about to be serviced. Uh, it's actually on a jig that allows the unit to be rotated, so it makes working on the unit a lot easier uh, and, and safer in terms of manual handling. Uh, components we've got here, we've got the main suspension arm, this here is the hub assembly that the wheel rotates on. We've got the bottle here, which contains the nitrogen gas. This here is the cylinder, which the piston runs up and down inside. The main body, which houses the crankshaft and main shaft, and then up underneath here is the sump. Uh, Steve's going to be doing the service uh, on this unit for us, so with that being said, I will get out of his way.
In addition to the suspension units that we had in storage, Horseman Defence System actually came on site and did an initial setup and check of the suspension units we have fitted to our running Challenger 1. This improved the ride height of the vehicle throughout and levelled off. We had a little lean to one side which was also cured uh, thanks to them. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and please do subscribe to the Tank Museum's channel on YouTube and support us on Patreon so that we can make even more videos like this.